Hi. Two zero. Two zero. Please. Call me 2020. So where are you from? Who? Oh. Me too. Call me or save me. I've been feeling so alone. I keep waiting for you, but you never come. Is this in my head? I don't know what to think. He knelt to the ground and pulled out a ring and said, Marry me, Juliet. You never have to be alone. Oh, I've dated much worse guys than him. Much worse. I mean, at least he's famous. I started by using the Match custom search filter. I filtered out joy, happiness, toilet paper, and reason. Boom. Most years I've dated are a little, I don't know, straightforward. I mean, there's a little misery, but nothing truly soul crushing about them. I just want to be remembered, you know? Do you know the poem, The Road Less Traveled by Shakespeare? I actually have the tattoo of it. Don't ask me where. You definitely. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> she gets me. That's the best part. When you meet someone that takes time to see beneath the surface. Of the earth. <laughs> it's just a perfect match. Why are you guys so anti-dictators? Imagine if America was a dictatorship. You could let 1% of the people have all the nation's wealth. You could help your rich friends get richer by cutting their taxes and bailing them out when they gamble and lose. You could ignore the needs of the poor for healthcare and education. Your media would appear free, but would secretly be controlled by one person and his family. You could wiretap phones. You could torture foreign prisoners. You could have rigged elections. You could lie about why you go to war. You could fill your prisons with one particular racial group and no one would complain. You could use the media to scare the people into supporting policies that are against their interests. I know this is hard for you Americans to imagine, but please try. While the world still waits for a COVID jab, China has come up with a way to limit the virus's spread. It's calling for a global firewall in the form of a global system of QR codes that would allow cross-border travel to resume. China has proposed a global mechanism for the mutual recognition of health certificates based on nucleic acid test results in the form of internationally accepted QR codes. We hope more countries will join this mechanism. China has been using QR codes to prove health status since February. The system has been questioned in the West on data privacy grounds, however, although Europe has proposed similar schemes, including the idea of immunity passports in the UK.
I used WeChat to order these dumplings using that QR code. This little QR code is a lot more powerful than it looks. It helps collect data about your travel history, health status, and more. And China's using it to track citizens and stop those infected with the coronavirus. First, you fill out a questionnaire. It asks for details like your body temperature. It then generates a color code. And at checkpoints popping up across China, green means go. It's my first time to come outside after the epidemic, but I already used the QR code several times, and I think it's good. It's proof of your identity. Our country is upgrading, and I think it's good to carry it out. Digital transformation is changing the way we manage our data, our information, our interactions, and our identities online. The United Nations is ready to digitally transform how it deals with identity, with a system to streamline information sharing, daily workflows, access to platforms and buildings, operating across agencies, by providing its personnel with a universal system-wide identity solution. Introducing the UN Digital ID, a unique and digital identity for UN personnel from the day you join to the day you part. All of your personal, HR, medical, travel, security, payroll and pension data in the palm of your hand, giving you full control on what you share and with whom. With blockchain and biometrics, the UN Digital ID makes verification efficient, secure, transparent, immutable, portable and universal. It's been piloted by different agencies and the UN Pension Fund, where they've replaced current manual processes with certainty for who and where pension recipients say they are at any given time. Imagine a regional field office has just joined the UN. She uses the mobile app to obtain a digital wallet, stored securely in her smartphone and only accessible to her with biometrics. Even better than a physical wallet, she can store all her credentials issued by any UN organization in her digital wallet. She has immediate access to course certificates, travel clearances from UN DSS, medical records from allergies to vaccinations, also making any transfer to another organization a breeze. As innovation transforms the world, we can improve the way we manage our identities online. UN Digital IDs, a building block for digital cooperation, unlocking the promise of the SDGs. The codes are being scanned everywhere, from restaurants to apartment blocks. Major cities and more than half of China's provinces have started to use the color codes, a way to make tracking down infected people easier for authorities. Australia is rolling out a COVID-safe QR code check-in system. From Tuesday, check-ins will be mandatory for venues such as pubs, clubs, restaurants and sporting facilities. Patrons will scan a code through the My Government app. The State Premier promising personal details will only be accessed by health officials and deleted after 28 days. 28 days. 28 days. 28 days. The South Australian Chief Public Health Officer says the program will help contact tracers. My
is when the world will end. Calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, 88 miles per hour, 88 miles per hour, 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Who has heard the poem called The Snake? You knew damn well I was a snake. You knew damn well I was a snake. You knew damn well I was a snake. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. These tests can be have a lot of false negatives and a lot of false positives. And you are not going to track and trace me where I'm going in terms of this town or that town. This is incredibly dangerous, and it's not really for my safety. And you're seeing in the United States, as well as across the, the globe, the people are starting to rise up and saying, enough. Stop protecting me. I want to live my life the way I choose. We look only, I was reading today, at Heathrow Airport it used to be one of the busiest. It's seen 82% fall in passengers. What's the way then to get wheels out into the air, if not a, si a similar system to this? The reason that travels collapse is not the pandemic, it's the lockdowns. It's not the pandemic, it's the lockdowns. It's not the pandemic, it's the lockdowns. It's not the pandemic, it's the lockdowns. Due to Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Oh. Uh, think, McFly. Oh. Think. What's that supposed to mean? Hello? Hey. Hello? Anybody home? Huh? Think, McFly. Think. Until Monday. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey! Think, McFly. Think. Oh, McFly, your shoes untied. Oh, oh, uh, don't be so gullible, McFly. Okay. I don't want to see you in here again. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Now we're living under this egregious uh, situation where, yeah, we once believed in the right to travel, but that's being denied to us. I mean, people are being locked in their nation states right now. The answer is to is liberalism, is, is to liberate uh, travel, liberate and recognize human rights again. There have been studies that show that the virus responds differently in different regions. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. That there are different conditions in different places based on population, based on climate and so forth. So no, we, we, we don't want global standards because global standards means a global lockdown in effect this is just uh, unbelievable i really don't care about cases i care about the death rate and the death rate is very slow 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 And again, we have to be very cautious with technology because once we turn this on, it's very hard to turn off. They will never relinquish. I mean, passports uh, during World War One were supposed to be temporary and we're, we're still stuck with them. Uh, every passenger flying to and from the Philippines will now have to download this contact tracing app. Register, You first you download the app into your phone and then you register and you enter in your name, your um, address, your phone number, contact number, email, and that gets saved into your account. This then generates what's called a QR code. In South Korea, be prepared to have your mobile phone on and ready to go. 
Starting next week, visitors to nightclubs, karaoke bars, and other venues will have to show a QR identity code for COVID-19 contact tracing. In order to get back home, I will need a special pass. To get the pass, he had to enter personal details on a government website. Where I'm going from and where I'm going to. Eventually, he downloaded a barcode on his phone that let him hit the road. Anyone traveling more than 100 yards from home in Moscow needs one. Police run spot checks on the streets. Even subway turnstiles won't open unless the rider has already logged the trip. To make contact tracing much easier in Carmona, Cavite, QR codes were placed in quarantine passes. Since modified Q passes were implemented in Cavite, they could be used by other members of the household, aged 21 to 59 years old. Before acquiring a QR code, a resident must be registered to the Carmona COVID-19 Tracer or CCT app. Using the QR code, the government can track the whereabouts of a Q pass holder. We have cameras in place all over the world right now. What? 